today i am asif ali will be talking all about uh, auto implementation <coughs> so let's first start with nolex adequates lack of adequate and manners is a huge turn off so we should follow these four adequates punctuality join the session five minutes prior to the session start time we start on time and calculate on time so <coughs> second is feedback make sure to sum, submit a constructive feedback for all sessions as it is very helpful for the presenter silent mode keep your mobile devices in silent mode and feel free to move out of session in case you need to attend an urgent call avoid disturbance and chit chat during the session so our agenda will be introduction to o2 and o2 roles grant type types and authorization process and the building blocks of O2. And finally, we will be looking at the demo example, like how we can set up uh, O2 in Spring Boot. So let's start with the introduction to O2. So first, we will be looking at the authorization. What is authorization? So the authorization is the process of determining where uh, whether an authenticated user or client has the necessary permissions to access a specific resource or perform a particular action within a system or an application. So authorization is the question like, are you allowed to do this? Something that is uh, user going to do. So it takes the permission. Basically, we can say. Uh, means it ensures that only author authorized users or clients can access certain data or functionalities protecting protecting sensitive information and maintaining the security of the system. So now what is O2? So O2 it is called open authorize authorization. It is an authorization framework that uh, enables third party applications to access resources on behalf of a resource owner or a user uh, with the resource owner's permission. It is widely used for securing APIs and enabling secure access to protected resources on the web. So O2 is an evolution of O1, like offering improvements in security, simplicity, and flexibility. It provides consented access and restricts actions of what the client app can perform on resources on behalf of the user like without without oversharing the user's credentials just asking to the uh, authorization server to like what uh, like if this user can do this and uh, it is an authorization protocol not the authentication protocol as such like it is designed primarily as a means of granting access to a set of resources for example remote apis or user data so let's look into the differences between auth1 and auth2 so auth1 has the com complexity complexity more complex and difficult to implement due to cryptographic requirements and token type it uses uh, both request and and access tokens signature uh, auth1 request are signed for the verification ensuring authenticity while the other side in auth2 it has the simplicity simpler simpler and more streamlined compared to oath one and it you, you it utilizes only access tokens and it is it is scalable supporting a wider range of use cases so uh oath, oath rules so we have here some uh roles uh like first one is the resource owner and the client authorization server and resource server so the resource server is the entity capable of granting access to a protected resource. Typically, this is the end user uh, who is responsible to grant the permission and uh, the client. Client is an application that is requesting access to a protected resource on behalf of the resource owner. And uh, like to access resources, the client must hold the appropriate access token from the authorization server. So the authorization server, basically the server that authenticates the resource owner and issues token access tokens after obta obtaining authorization from the uh, resource owner. So, and the final, finally the resource server, 
the server that is hosting the protected resources it is capable of accepting and responding to request using access tokens so now the grant types so there are uh, some mainly grant types that are uh, first is the authorization code uh, the grant type is widely used for server side applications in sorry client client confidentiality it involves redirection where the app communicates with the user's browser to receive authorization codes and second is the implicit thus a simplified flow where the access token is returned directly to the client in the implicit flow the authorization server may return the access token as a parameter in the callback uri or as a response to a form post and uh, third one is the resource owner or password credentials this this grant requires the uh, client first to acquire the resource owner's credentials which pass which pass the to the authorization server like uh, allowing users to provide their credentials directly to the application which then exchange exchanging them for an access token it's useful for the trusted applications like native mobile apps and uh, last one is the client credentials so client credentials used for the non interactive applications like uh, automated processes microservices etc and uh, it allows a client to request an access token using the resource owner's username and password directly rather than going through an authorization process with redirects so now we have the authorization authorization process so authorization process uh, generally is the process like it is a flow how the O2 works internally. So first the client will request to the uh, authorization server and then supplying the client ID and secret to as identification. It, it, it also provides the scopes and uh, an endpoint, end, endpoint URI. So to send the access token or the authorization the server authenticates the client and verifies the requested scopes are permitted. Then the resource owner, resource owner interacts with the authorization server to guarantee permission or access. And in the next step, the authorization server redirects back to the client with either an authorization, authorization code or an access token, depending on the grant type. So with the access token, the client requests access to the resource from the resource owner we will be looking in a real world uh, example in next step for the flow of the o2 how it works so <clears throat> this is a typical use case uh, basically uh, this is the application and this is the protected api like the api that that uh, this application wants to access so this is the secured api and to access this api this application needs some uh, access token so it will ask to the authorization server uh, for the access token then this authorization server will goes to the user for the permission like this application wants to access your information without having any credentials so this uh, server will ask to the user then user will authorize 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 the request or cancel if this uh, user authorize the request then this authorization server will will generate a access token that is containing the permission granted by this end user then this application uh, th that wants to this a uh, wants to access this api this application is having now the access token this application will use that access access token to use this api so now we have some building blocks of O2. So first one is the scopes and consent. Scopes are the mechanism that define permissions and set boundaries for what an application or service does or does not have to exist. And uh, when an app sends an authorization request, the user is presented with the specific scope of the request and must authorize the consent this consent serves as proof of authorization and allows an access token to be granted so we have here four actors so these four actors are the uh, we, we already have the uh, this uh, these four actors in our roles 
as a roles in our previous slides. So uh, as you already aware about a resource owner and resource server and client and authorization server, let me explain again. So these uh, the resource owner owns the data for which access is requested. The server the, the resource owner can be an individual and user or a company. And the second one is the resource server. This is the API or server that securely stores the data in the application or service has requested to access. The server resource server must accept and validate an access token from the requesting application to grant access to the data. And then the client is the application or service requesting access to the data. The resource server uh, is protecting and uh, client clients gain access to the requested resources by presenting a valid access token to the resource server then the authorization server uh, this basically handles the token management it manages tokens which are which are like keys and access and uh, keys to access resources when a client wants to access to something like uh, the photos or any other data it asks the authorization server to Authorization server to check like valid uh, this request is valid or not. Once the user say yes, then the server gives the client a new access token like a special key to use on the resource server. So and we have clients. We have two types of clients here: uh, confidential and public clients. So confidential clients keep secrets and operate in secure areas inaccessible to end users. And the public clients, on the other hand, are less secure and include browsers, mobile browsers, mobile apps, and IoT devices. Now we have two types of tokens: access tokens and the refresh tokens. Access tokens are granted by the authorization server and used to access the data in the resource server. They typically allow clients to access resources for a few few minutes up to a few hours, and the Refresh tokens. Refresh tokens are only granted to confidential clients with secure authentication pro protocols, and these can be valid for days, months, or even years. They can also be used to get new access tokens for other clients. So now uh, we will be looking at the example of uh, Spring Boot, like how how we can setting up the O2 in our Spring Boot. So let me show you a demo example. First, I will show you the process, the flow of how it works. So here, as I explained earlier. O2 playground. So we have here. So these are the flow of the O2. So we will be looking at authorization code. So you, you also can uh, explore this website like for the there are multiple ways like implicit device code, PKCE and authorization code. So I will go for the authorization code and it will show you how step by step how it, it works. So like list first we need to register a client before uh, yeah, you will need to register a client and create a user. So if we want to create an app or app, then we should uh, register a client. Then that uh, auth, auth provider will uh, provide the client secret and client I, client ID that we have to use in our application. So this is the flow. You can you can uh, check in this website, and uh, let me show you how it works. So we need to. Save these credentials here. Now let me use these credentials in our log login. So after logging something, then it will ask to the end user, uh, like the resource owner, like this application or to playground would like to uh, would like the ability to access your photos so it will ask it will ask to the end user then if user will approve then it will say like internally it will match the uh, state and if it matches then it will pro provide the uh, 
uh, access token here as you can see. So this is the overview of how it works and uh, the flow of in in a real world scenario. So we have the hacker rank website where uh, I'm showing you this example because this application um, has the implementation of the O2. As you can see here, we have multiple uh, ways to log in uh, without having our password and uh, username. So we don't need to provide our username or password. We just can go to the Google or LinkedIn or GitHub if you already ha have these these accounts. So if I click on this uh, continue with Google, so it will go to the a new window. And then if I click to my account like I want to sign in with this account, then it will ask for the like by continuing this Google will share your your name, email address, language preference and profile picture with the hacker link. So first it is asking me like uh, the end user like. Uh, are you sure to give, give these access to this website? So if. I want to go with hacker rank, then it will also show you how it works like. It is clearly indicating that this wants to access your account and this application will be able to read your private private email address. So this is the process how if I if the end user will authorize from here, then it will uh, it will be accessing your data without having an, and you will be able to log in into this website without having any credentials. So let's uh, move to the ex demo part. So. Let me start with. This spring initializer. So this is the uh, we will be creating a demo example uh, using Maven and we will be choosing seven uh, Java is 17. So it will be a. Two example. OK, and we will add the dependencies like spring web. And the another one. to client. So let me generate. Uh, OK. O2. The name will be O2. So let me extract it. Let me open it into the IntelliJ in the node ID. So so this is my project that we are going to implement. So this is the O2 application. And first we should have a controller. So I would like to create a controller in the controller package. It will be a home controller basically. And I will make it to rest controller. So and it will be having two endpoints. First one is will be returning a string with home page. So it will return welcome. And it will be our uh, home route so it will be accessible to anyone and we then we will be creating another endpoint that will be accessible only authorized users so it will return a string and it will be secure home okay 
and it will return as welcome to nasdaq something like so and the get mapping will be nasdaq okay so now we are ready with our controller so let me let me configure the o2 so for that we should have a configuration class so the, with the name security config and it will be having configuration annotation and enable web security and now we will create a pin here with the security filter chain this been having security http security and throws the exception so now we are ready with this to configure the o2 so now it will return http dot build and to configure the o2 first we should have a authorized authorized http request it will have a lambda here and to match the home routes we we will be having a request matchers here and this will be our home route and now i will decide like it will be accessible to authenticated users or the it will be permitted to all so i will using this permit to all so anyone can access this endpoint and for the any other endpoint like any request for any other request the user should be authenticated and now we will be including the o2 login like if you want to if you want to login with form login then we can use this one also or if i want to use o2 then we can use this with the customize customization a default customization okay and i will uh, let me let me show you the difference here now so for this we should have some properties some configuration in the application dot property so i'll i already have these values here so first we will be looking for the for the github github authorization okay so this is the uh, configuration like spring security o2 client registration github so if you want to implement with other uh, o2 provider o2 pro providers then you can use the, that and you can replace with like google or, or anything else okay and these all values will be same so for this one uh, first i need to create an app in the github uh, auth app so let, let let's first create that app so uh, let me show you how to so first we need to go to the settings to create that auth, and, auth app in the developer settings in auth apps now we are ready to create a new auth app so the name will be demo and the url will be uh, whatever you want so i would like to change the port here so the port will be 9090 or 9000 and it will be uh, so this is the callback url basically so we are ready to go here and now if you want to upload a um, logo here for your website then you can upload a logo so uh, I, i'm not going to do this so for this one uh, we already have a client id and for the secret we need to generate so let's first put the client id in our app application copy it from here and for the client secret we need to generate a client secret so 
this client secret will be accessible only once so copy this client secret and paste, paste it here so now we are ready to go with our application uh, let me run this application okay actually i have changed the port now so i need to So now our application will be running on 9000 port 9000. So as you can see, this is the home route. So it is accessible to any user. Okay, if I want to uh, access the another one, uh, that is Nestec. So for that, we need to authorize our application. Uh, so it is directly goes to the uh, GitHub, GitHub authorization because we only have this uh, port to uh, port to mechanism in our application. So if I want to add others also, let me show you. Like we have another one also here. Like it will show, it will also show the uh, form login. So now if I rerun this application. Now we should have two types of login methods. Yeah. So as you can see, this is the uh, another method like uh, you can use your username and password here to log in to this application or you can go with the GitHub or any other auth provider like GitHub, Google, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. So I would like to go with the GitHub. Then it will go to the authorization server, and then it is asking to me like this application wants to access your information. Okay, if I authorize this from here, then it will be redirecting to to the secured web page. So that we have uh, implemented like welcome to nest tag. So this is the way how it works and for the. Let me show you with Google also. So for the Google, if you want to implement for Google. So first you need to create a app from here. So what you have to do, you just need to go to the console.google. And from here, then you need to find out the APIs and services. So, okay. Okay, you also can search from here because APIs and services. So, you can go to this page. So here you have to go to the credentials to create a create a OTF. So now I will create auth client ID. Uh, so we, we can select our uh, our application type like Android, Chrome, or extension. So we will choose web application here, and the name will be O2. And now, uh, similarly, we should uh, add the URL uh, here. So this is the URL. Uh, okay, we just need to add one URL here, no? Oh, not this one. This one, the callback URL. And 
and we need to change this google because we are creating here we are creating for google authorization mechanism so this will provide a client secret and client id in a similar way you need to copy this client id and paste it here in our application load properties so first you need to create separate uh, configuration here for google like it will be for and github will be now google and the client id will copy it from here 